Hi everyone, welcome back to AI Coding Channel. Today, as per request, we're having a Q&A and I've gathered a lot of different questions from all my social media, from Twitter, YouTube, all my emails and Instagram, and I will answer all your questions regarding data science and machine learning. Let's start. In which programming language do you work? Uh, this is actually a question that I'm constantly getting from everyone. It might be a bit confusing that I'm constantly posting videos and uh, posts about different programming languages that I use for machine learning. I mainly work with Python, but it is true that I sometimes like to make uh, certain things in other programming languages like C++ or C Sharp, and that's why I also share those things with you. I like to prototype things for developers who are going to consume some of my models, so I do that sometimes in those two, C++ or C Sharp. And uh, I also find it fascinating to do machine learning with other programming languages. So that's the reason why I do it with C++, it's a beautiful language. Which bachelor's did you do to become a machine learning engineer slash data scientist? I have a video on this topic. If you haven't watched it yet, uh, I'm posting the link here below. I, I actually studied something called uh, acoustics and image processing, um, which helped me a lot become actually a computer vision engineer. To become a machine learning engineer and data scientist itself, I did not do a bachelor's in computer science or machine learning itself. What do you actually do at work? <laughs> well, currently I'm doing a lot of research, so I'm reading a lot of papers, and I also get to do some modeling, but we're not at that phase yet. So I'm doing all the research for future um, AI to be integrated inside our product. How did you get into the position you are currently at? Um, actually, that's a good question. I think a lot of you have the question of, uh, should I pursue masters and a PhD or bachelor's specific into machine learning and data science? Uh, I didn't do that, uh, not because I didn't want to. I think by the time I was doing my bachelor's and my master's, we didn't have that option to to go through that specific bachelor's degree. Uh, what I did was a lot of uh, self-learning and uh, reading a lot of dif uh, different uh, job positions that I liked and what were the requirements. And I was slowly just uh, filling up uh, what I was missing from my curriculum or from my skills. And I think that's the way I got into the position that I'm currently at. Have you ever worked as a computer vision engineer in industry? If not, why? <sighs> I have not, and it's a shame. I really wanted to work as a computer vision engineer, but by the time that I started looking for a job, I was based in Denmark, and there was not a lot of opportunities in that field. Then I moved to Lithuania, and again, there's not a huge market for computer vision engineers in general. So I haven't had the opportunity. I wish I could have, but I just do a lot of side projects and I share them. Where can I practice machine learning? Um, there's a lot of resources that um, you can follow to learn machine learning or to practice it. If you want to get code and hands-on, uh, I recommend you to browse through GitHub. There's tons of uh, different projects there that you can basically look at. Python or R and Y? Maybe why, the Y first? Uh, I use Python for everything. I didn't have a second thought when I was, I was learning. I think it was just a requirement for, for what I was studying to just do Python and I never thought about using R. So I got a lot of experience in Python. It is true that for machine learning, there's a lot of Python documentation, tutorials and things like that out there. So it's easier to follow. But I've used R before as well. You know, if you are coming from an R background, there's not an impediment from you, for you to, to do ML. Can you recommend a book for computer vision? I only know the basics. Yes, I do have a book for you that I like a lot and I was uh, using it when I was studying my master's. It's called Computer Vision Algorithms and Applications by, uh, I'm gonna pronounce this very badly, Richard Shaliski. Do you think a data science machine learning career is safe in the future? I think uh, people are afraid of not getting a job or not having a job in the future related with this field, but I'm, I'm sure it's, it's safe and when you're doing data science and machine learning, what you're getting is a skill set for yourself and you know, even in the future, if it's not called data science, AI, ML, you're definitely going to be able to work in something related just by the skills that you're going to acquire now. How long did it take you to learn data science? Um, I think I'm still learning it, especially because I've been uh, changing between positions 
uh, fairly often and in each position I have to do something different regarding data science. So I think it's a never ending studies, but to basically learn the basics and to feel that I was prepared to actually apply for a proper data science or machine learning position, I would say that it took me around like a year, year and a half to feel confident that I can actually do this job. Can you work in data science or machine learning without having a computer science degree or a PhD? I do not have a PhD and I definitely don't have a degree in computer science and I'm working in the field and I know a lot of people that are working in the field as well without a PhD. Uh, but it depends where you're applying to. Company has different requirements and you know what type of position you're applying to as well. How to become a group programmer? Um, just practice, uh, consistency, and uh, that's about it. How to become good at anything, you need to practice a lot. Do you freelance or do you have a rock solid job? I have a job. I've thought about freelancing many, many times, but as I mentioned before, I've had jobs in so many different fields and areas that I don't feel like I have a niche to just focus on freelancing. Uh, but maybe in the future, who knows? Do you work with your statistics provided by your Instagram account? Uh, I made a dashboard from some data that I downloaded from my Instagram account, but I definitely don't use it that much. I use social media to try to, you know, showcase how I work, what type of side projects I come up with. So I'm not that into looking at everything that's happening in my social media right now, how many followers and things like that. Tips for non-tech people that are getting into data science. I love this question so much um, because I learned myself that there's so many talented people out there that could be very good at data science and they don't think that they could because they don't come from a programming background, computer science, and they're just so much needed in this field. So I would suggest to, you know, if you're starting to join the communities, um, go to events, uh, try to build uh, small real life projects and ask a lot of questions to people who have been in your same situation or that can help you out with uh, anything that you need. And uh, don't be scared. You don't need to have all this skill set that will throw you back. Um, you can be a data scientist with any tool that you want to use and that you feel comfortable with. Uh, the important thing would be that you generate value and how you generate it. Do you need to learn front-end to deploy ML models? Um, no, you don't deploy them uh, in your front-end. How do you do machine learning with a programming language other than Python? Is it easier? I don't think it's easier. I think Python is, is the easiest to do because you have a lot of frameworks. As I explained earlier, I either um, help developers consume Python model using other programming languages or I just have the interest to see how I can build things from scratch just using other programming language. But no, I, I don't think it's easier. You also have other frameworks. Um, there's like ML.NET machine learning in C Sharp, for example, and that's not very difficult to use. Uh, how many hours per day do you spend coding? I wish I would spend more uh, because right now, as I mentioned, I'm working a lot into reading and uh, research. I don't get the time to code that much, but yeah, I used to code a lot of a lot of hours, maybe 12 hours straight. Right now, I would say that maybe I'll spend four hours coding, something like that. How do you get a job without having a portfolio? Actually, I don't have a portfolio. I'm building it right now uh, in terms of public portfolio, like a website. I also got a job, my first job, without my portfolio itself. The only thing that I had was a master's thesis and the code for that. I think that maybe a few years ago was easier to get a job without a portfolio. I've seen this question popping up so many times that if you probably don't have a bachelor's or a master's related with this field, you might need to demonstrate your skill set. Uh, if you don't have a portfolio, uh, just try to build one or try to demonstrate somehow like by cert certifying yourself that you actually can do that job. Do you think some companies confuse data science with machine learning profile? Oh, definitely, all the time. I do believe so. It's really important for you to ask the recruiter or the hiring manager what is that you're exactly going to be doing because some companies differentiate that data science sometimes they don't, sometimes you don't do machine learning at all. Sometimes it's just an analytics job. So I do think that there's still 
there's still not a consensus out there. Is machine learning a solo job in a company or do you need a team? I'm those type of people that think that you need a team. You need a team of developers, analysts, even UX designers. Very, very, very big team you need. But yeah, I think that small companies, they do like to have just one person doing everything. Uh, but I think uh, the team is better. Uh, you definitely get uh, more ideas from different backgrounds, from different people that are interested in that same field. Any good course that you did during bachelor's or master's degree. I did, I love this course from Stanford University about CNN for visual recognition. It helped me understand computer vision very well and deep learning models as well. What excites you the most? This is a bit with how I get motivated uh, and one of the reasons why I love doing personal projects. I love to see how people use my tools or my product. I love to see my models in production and how useful they are and how people use them and how people get ideas of how to use them. Um, that's pretty cool. If taking a self-learning path, what kind of math should one expect? I think that you need the basics of what someone would study in maybe their first years of bachelor's or if you're lucky enough, you did it in your high school. So basics of uh, linear algebra, calculus, uh, and statistics. Which was the first programming language you learned? During my first year of uh, bachelor's, yeah, it was C. How can I build a portfolio for data science or machine learning? I would say that the best way to do that is if you're really interested in solving a problem and you have a niche, um, just an example, just classifying uh, your plants at home, then you should just build those type of of things you should build things that are not uh, out there that they are unique so just don't try to do what other people are doing just be creative and uh, demonstrate that you can use the you know most popular frameworks to build small projects for yourself is it possible to switch back between computer vision and machine learning yeah definitely and you can do that with data science as well I don't think there's any sort of limitation you use deep learning with computer vision and you can definitely go and and work with classical machine learning models as well. I don't think there's a problem with that. Do you prefer startups, small agencies, or tech giants? Good question. I don't know what I prefer. I've done a bit of everything, and uh, it's a bit related with the, whether you have a big team or not. I would recommend to first start um, with big companies maybe because you have a team, you have people to learn from, unless you are very confident on working by your own and learning everything by yourself. At what age did you start learning to code? Um, so my first year of bachelor, so I was about 18 years old. Suggest so courses trending in industry. I think in industry itself, uh, most of the courses that I get recommended are from cloud providers. So how to do machine learning or get certified uh, using Google Cloud Platform, Azure. I also know that a lot of people use Coursera. Do you consider yourself a data scientist? I think I asked this question to myself a couple of days ago because I was uh, panicking and also feeling like, am I a data scientist, am I a machine learning engineer, what am I? I concluded that I am like a data scientist core so I do data science, but I like to focus more in the software engineering part, so more uh, building the models, serving it, integrating them, mm, than the product analytics itself. Um, the product analytics will be the part of how people are actually engaging with your product and more of that type of data than the actual um, model training and producing the ML product itself. Another related question, why did you move from data science to machine learning? from machine learning to data science, I did not. Um, I think the titles changed, but essentially, as I just mentioned, I'm still considering that maybe I'm data science core focusing on machine learning more than analytics. Have you ever felt that you don't know what you're doing? Oh, such a good question. All the time, especially when I'm getting into a new project, um, there's a lot of research behind the change of domain knowledge and get into a new domain every time you get into a different project. Actually, it sounds, um, changing from company to company kind of makes you feel like you're a freelancer, a consultant. That was a question before. And uh, I, I'm constantly feeling like that. And there's no problem with that. You will always find the way to solve the problems. That's basically what you're there for. You're there to do problem solving. And last question, what is the most beautiful thing you've learned 
throughout your career. That data science is actually an art. Uh, it's such a creative field. And that was the last question. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video and you would like to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have more questions and if you would like to see more Q&As. Thank you and see you in the next video.